What's with the dots? Oh. You know, truly I love this game. It is a great game and it hurts me to think that this is the end of Grot's Tale. Like I really want more. I, I don't want it to end, I don't want it to stop. You know? Like it is truly a fantastic game. And I am very much in love with it. Like my, my chest is actually s sore with the idea of it, you know, being done. Huh, they're actually d inflicting toxicity on me. Interesting. Give you more breeding ground. Gotta destroy it if they're to disappear for good. Thing. But yeah, I, I, I truly do love it. And um, I, w I, I wish it just wouldn't end, you know? Well, kind of on some, I wish I could experience it all again for the first time. Like, seriously, this is a great game. I do have to highly rate it. Certainly, it has its flaws and fubs. But it is a good, great game. Truly, really, hats off to CG Project Red. They made a great thing here. Rolt. Bad idea. I uh, played too much uh, Shadow Mordor. I was expecting the guy to just burst into flames from a sudden geyser of flame because he stood on his campfire. You saved my life. I shall never forget it. Before long, you will have to look to fairy tales to find a witcher or a knight. Greetings, thing legend. <laughs> Well, that's certainly high praise, and it's nice to actually be respected for saving someone. Some half-friends have been wandering around near Mont Crane. They call themselves Knights of Rant, but I call them swill-slurping miscreants. No idea what they're looking for here. The will mills around for them to charge. Uh, reference to Don Quixote. But those adult... A uh, I don't really know much about him, to be honest. I just remember seeing the newsroom and them referencing it. Uh, but those adult ankle biters dream of mad ideas no normal man would ever comprehend contemplate. No matter what they're up to, they're there to stop it. It's tree now, I should stop soon. The best way to take care of a knight around is to cut off his head. If anyone brings me such a head, he can count, uh, he can count on a plump pouch of coins. As you know, Philbert Four Fingers makes no idle promises. It can be harsh, but can also be generous. F uh, Philbert. You can hear me, you can hear the game, I'm recording, and you can see it. All is good. So I'm just worried something's wrong.
Got Bucare saddlebags. I do believe I already have some. Yes. I got all the other kit in the game that you have to earn via horse racing and shit. Vastly, well, generally inferior to whatever you find here in Bucare. Uh, or if not inferior, at least on par. So if you are having difficulties winning races, just hold off. This, well, it might depend on the races. Oh. Rough. Uh, it might depend on the races, but uh, you just hold off on them. And then do them once you get here to Beauclair. You get the road shop and all the best gear in the existence, then you can do it. Of course, some of them you might miss out on. Um, trying to follow that advice, I think there might be some main quest for horse racing, but you know. If you can't, you know, to some extent that's good advice. To some extent. Oh, hey I've listened to this song before. On the Champions, like I can't pronounce it. It's nice music. Move it. Well, sorry, I've uh, put that on on YouTube before. I've played when I'm saying played it before. I've you know hit play there. Um, it's it's quite nice music. Don't mind me, just riding on in. Oh, this is a house. Done. Come one, come all. You can all get the, your arse kicked by me. Fucking shield bandit. I'm spinning. You cannot stop the spin. The spin to win is ridiculously effective. It's silly. Also, it's not a perfect strategy, but it is fun. Oh, I'm being tossed back all the way here. Hmm. Okay, it does do damage. Let's have it anticipated, though. Gratifed her. Okay, I do believe it was this way. Yes. Remember really liking Film Sack. I haven't really watched it in a while. Listened to that podcast in a while though. Uh, well, it's really weird when the... They were like covering one movie and there's a guy in the movie and he was a dick. So one of the uh, hosts used it as a way to take a jab at Gamer Nate. Like they all have their little intro jokes. And you used the guy being a dick in the movie as a vehicle to take a Sam at Gamer It was really weird. Uh, I think it was. 
I won't say which guy it was, but um, I don't even remember which. I don't even remember which episode it was. Some sort of disaster or movie of some sort. I like giant insects, fire, something or other. Um, but I can't remember any of the details. Uh, really. But yeah, that always just was really odd to me, you know? Like otherwise, you know, like they'd never done anything like that previously, and for a while it like watched afterwards. I didn't stop because of that. It was just I don't remember why I stopped watching. I know I um Actually I think I got might have gotten muted by the main guy because of a Gamergate thing. I disagreed with him on something and um He he said he was muting people over it. And I figured he probably muted me because I did disagree with him. So uh, I didn't really watch his stuff after that. But I never, like, obviously on Twitter, you don't know if you've been muted or not. So I don't know if he ever did actually mute me. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, it w I didn't stop watching because of that or anything like that. It just threw me off. That's all. Did stop watching another podcast, though, for one of the hosts being an idiot. They would, uh, like, most of the time they were fine, but uh, there were chapter by chapter, like, a um, breakdown and analysis of A Song of Ice and Fire. Um, and it was rather interesting to listen to, but they would come, occasionally come up with really silly things. Um, like, they were trying to say... Like, they were, like, trying to make a point about one of the characters in it. Uh, you know, Arya's, uh, sword, sword, skill, uh, sword trainer. He was, like, he called, refers to her as a boy. We, uh, I... Thank you. I choose to believe that's the guy from ages ago. I finally have to run me down. It's not, but I choose to believe it. Yeah. But anyway, he um, he calls her a boy, and she says, "I'm not a boy, I'm a girl." Ah, the sword doesn't care. So you know, like ba the, 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 they have a little conversation about it. But she makes two points. The female host, there's two guys and a chick. She makes two points in it. She says. It's it's sexist against women. To, like say if he when he's training boys, he may call them girls, as a you know something. I can't remember what phrasing they would use it. It's sex. That's that's making girls that to be a bad thing to be. So that's sexist against girls. But then if you call Arya a boy, as in making a, a boy out to be a bad thing, it's still sexist against girls. She then goes on in a later bit about how George R. R. Martin needed to redeem himself for having characters in a, you know, in A Song of Ice and Fire be sexist. He had to redeem himself. Like a guy says, poison is a woman's tool. It was the tool women, cowards, and uh, eunuchs. Uh, no, eunuch, uh, women, craven, and eunuchs. Um... And he had to, uh, George R. R. Martin himself had to redeem himself for, for having a character say that. Of course, that may have been a joke that she didn't mean seriously, but taken in light of what she also said, the, you know, punching Alex hurts Julie, but punching, Ju uh, pu punching Julie hurts Julie. Punching Alex over there hurts Julie. She, you know, she probably wasn't meaning it as a joke. Just to clarify, you know, making girls out to be a bad thing is hurt is sexism against women. Making boys out to be a bad thing is sexism against women.
as far as I can tell, she said both, t you know, that, that, that two points and the redeeming himself thing with full sincerity. It's hard to tell, maybe both were jokes, maybe one was a joke and one was sincere. It's hard to tell, but there was a few of these, um, I won't say there's more than these two upcroppings, but there were enough to, to completely, completely, completely turn me off the show. The uh, host is now gone off the show, but that's like 40, 50 episodes in. Um, and that it's like an hour or so per episode. So, I would have to listen to random, you know... Fits of just idiocy. And, I'm sorry, I don't have that level of patience in me. Like, it was a great show, but... A great podcast, but... I just did not have the patience for that. Um... Like, just the logical contradiction of it, just... The lo just logical contradiction of the whole thing just... Hurts, you know? Greetings, living legend. Greetings, living legend. Like, it just... Uh, like, it's just sheer logical contradiction of saying such a thing. Just... Ah... Uh, it's, it, it, it's goddamn painful. They say you get summon summon out, but they don't have a summon mechanic here. Only in the henses themselves. But yeah, just the logical contradiction of the whole thing. Ah. Oh. Well, on one front, the logical contradiction of the whole thing just irritates me to an unbelievable degree. And in the other case, like, it, just because something happens in a book doesn't mean that the author agrees with it. Certainly some, like, for Ayn Rand, the, it's her story, Athel Shrugged, is apparently her way of expressing her philosophy. And there's certain characters, they're the ones expressing it, and then there's the others disagreeing with it, with it in one way or another. Um, obviously... You know, there's actions there that are what she, you know, that's the philosophy she's putting forward, being expressed by those characters. Um, but just because, but, you know, beyond that, in like, someone makes an adventure novel or whatever, just because stuff happens in it doesn't necessarily mean the, per the author agrees with it, you know? Like, for example, with Siri. She was raped in the Blood of Elves. And it's... The scene was just... It was so ridiculous, it was almost funny. She's, uh... Like, uh, she gets captured by some Nilfgaardian knights. Or some... Swordsmen of some sort. And she's brought to a tavern. She They've captured another, like, some brigand or... A thief around the same age. The thief's, you know... Uh, you know, kin... Uh, you know, get a fellow gang members come and rescue him, and uh, Siri, you know, joins in fighting off the other guys. Though she has hesitance actually killing him. Um, but anyway, later on they're back at camp. They've, you know, talk around the campfire, they're drinking or whatever, and she goes to try and sleep. 
the guy that had also been that had been captured alongside her, tries to rape her. A girl that she met with the group comes up, scares him off, then tries to rape her herself. Then, well, as, as in gang member, female gang member tries to rape Siri. After scaring off the other guy, it was just it was just like fuck's sake. Uh, but anyway, my, my ultimate point was just simply, um, like I sincerely doubt the author of Witcher, you know, is groovy with that. He may have wrote it, but that's the setting he's writing. Suddenly, like, I'm trying to work on my own story bit by bit, pieces here and there. Like, for example, I've, you know, I'm after, like, there's a group of hunters in my story. I couldn't kill a beastie, you know, I've... It would take a lot for me to do it, and it would probably really bother me. You know, I couldn't go out hunting. I've, ah, I'm a, you know, I'm a precious little flower. You know, soft little. What's the phrasing I used to use? I'm a delicate little flower. You know, I wouldn't really have it in me. But I'm still writing about it. I'm still having characters that do it. You know, just because an order writes something doesn't necessarily mean they agree with it or espouse it. And for someone, you know, going this in-depth into A Song of Ice and Fire, to actually think that that's the case is unbelievably stupid. Again, I want to say that they're joking, but given what else they've espoused seemingly sincerely, like the other guys, were, the other hosts were disagreeing with them, trying to offer counterpoints that, you know, wasn't just, yeah, outright sexism. But no, she was certain it was just sexism. Um, it makes it come off as sincere and not some joke on her part. I'm trying to think it's a joke because it's kind of an illogical statement. Besperching women is sexism against women. Besperching men is sexism against women. It's... da. So, you know, given both of them, she came off as completely sincere and just... Sorry, I'm just... <sighs> There's some things that are just mind killers for me. They're just like such in incredibly illogical statements that just don't make any sense to me. I, 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 I just, my brain just can't function after hearing them or think of remembering, remembering them. Um, there was a point I was going to make there, I can't quite remember what it was. I was saying that, like, in Witcher, Siri gets raped in Blood of Elves, um, again, 14-ish at the time. Um, and yeah, obviously the author, you know, wouldn't be groovy with that, he may have wrote it, but he isn't groovy with such a thing, you know? But yeah, I just found it funny, like, you think, oh, she saved, the other one came to rest. Oh, no, no, no. She was just scaring the, him off so she could do it herself. Ah, oh, of course. You know, it's... It, on some, you know, gauss humory way, it's almost comical. Um, and then I was saying about my story, like, I'm too much of a delicate flower, I wouldn't be able to hunt myself. But I'm still writing characters that hunt. Just because an author writes it doesn't mean they believe it. And to be covering a series like... A Song of Ice and Fire, and believing that to one degree or another is most confounding. And remember, I feel there's a point I was gonna continue on with. If I have started saying it and kind of left it hanging, please let me know in the comments, and I'm sure I'll fucking remember. Like, there's an issue I have where I can't just forget and let things go, be it personal, like, like someone wronging me to one degree or another, I have difficulties letting go, or, you know, someone just being really moronic like that, I have difficulties letting it go, it still winds me the fuck up. Oh. It's, ah, oh, just, yeah. I, I can do it eventually for some of this. Where is the bandit camp? Ah, 
give it a go. Like I can do it eventually for some things, but uh, others have difficulty, you know, just letting go of that, like, not, you know? It's something I need to work on, and yeah. Uh, but yeah, basically, if I've, if I've ha did start, I can't remember if I started the point there, I might have just taught it for a second and then forgot. Um, I might have even actually fully said it, but, and then thought I didn't. But yeah, ultimately it was illogic. Uh, it said two conflicting statements, and then the other thing was, you know, what the author says in their book. Like, he said this, and one of his characters said this. Thus, he must redeem himself. You know, while reading Game of Thrones, while reading A Song of Ice and Fire, a series full of dark, horrible shit. Like, it's, you know, it's crazy to think that while reading such a dark series. And what else? Oh, I can't remember. I was trying to summate what happened there and then I just blanked again. Oh, I can't remember. I'm going on about this too much anyway. I might have stretched it into two episodes. Just, you know, straddling one, you know? Only a, uh, only a fragment of notes is legible. Some Miss Pinkings yet. Haven't even seen a stray mutt on the road for a week. Since the last caravan we robbed, the one carrying a transport of bank fat for workers at the quarry. Uh, we've had nothing. Z zero zip. What could we ate or fill after that? Gained a little slight pa paunch to hold us through hard times. But those times last much longer. We've eaten more supplies here than we've looted. Everyone thinks being a bandit's nothing but wine, wenches, and merrymaking. Should have listened to Mama and finished school. Or we started it. Tomorrow we head to Mont Crane. We'll have to look around for a new spot. Lads are getting bed sores from lying around under uh li from so much lying around under bums. This one. Hey, uh, what time is it? Whoa, there it's goes. half three. I should call it now, really. I'll hit up this last question mark. It's still bugging me what the hell I was saying. And it? Yeah. Sorry, this is an RPG. Got help bars. You can't just decapitate me and be done. Want me to come back in a minute? They got three. Yeah, it's still bugging me what I feel I've forgotten there. But yeah, if I've started the point and left it half finished, feel free to ask me to finish it. I'm sure I'll remember. Or if not, I can at least uh, take a good crack at it. Just include a timestamp, because otherwise I won't know have a clue what you're talking about. And that kind of goes true for everything. If you're referencing something in my video, please include a timestamp. Because by the time the video comes out, I will long since moved past it, and as such, I have no idea what you're referring to. Like, I had video footage coming out from 2016 in early 
blotchy parchment to Jacques Le Rouge. Uh, Le Rouge. What the bleeding bum diddles are you still doing there? Think I sent you on a scenic holiday? Yesterday those winged dung munchers grabbed Gilbert straight off the walls while he was taking his after supper wee. How many more men am I going to lose through your incompetence? You cabbage brained cr cretin. You were supposed to build a ballista as per the instructions I gave you and kill those flying lizards. But don't finish the job in the next two days. I'm going to stuff you full of sulfur and toss you to the monsters for a snack. Perhaps that way you'll at least somewhat contribute to solving the problem. No regards, Filbert. Ah, tell with it. Tell her to comment. Uh, let's go do this one. That was actually a phrase previously. Uh, when the English came in and started taking over the eastern coast of Ireland, uh, the people, they uprooted a ton of Irish people. And they sent them. Slizard? Hmm. That reminds me of Adventure Quest. There is a, t a, d a race of Zards, and they had all different, like, you know, like a green Zard, ice Zard, fire Zard. But, um, damn it. <sighs> ah, yeah, so Tower to Connacht. Couldn't remember it for a moment. But anyway, um, yeah, when the English were coming in and they were conquering territory, they took nice uh, lands off people, as you'd expect, and gave it to others or, you know, kept it. But the people that used to live there, they sent off to the west coast, where there was poor soil and it was generally worse all around. A uh, phrase came, uh, like people were at sore points sent. Uh, I, mean, I think they were at sore points sent there, presumably. So, to Howard the Connacht. Um, that was her choice, really. Um, die or go to Connacht. Um, yeah. Apparently, not the best choice either way. Uh, beyond the Pale, pan. Oh, I've heard someone claim that that actually ties in with Irish history as well, because there was a place called the Pale. It was a Dublin and a bit of territory, like Dublin and a bit south of it, controlled by the English. Beyond the Pale meant, well, everywhere outside it. You've gone out, you know, beyond British domain. By hook or by crook was also tied in with Irish history to one degree or another. Though I believe Vikings this time. By hook or by crook. Uh, it's an English phrase, but and it means necessary. Um, uh, the origin of the phrase is obscure. With uh, I'm just reading off Wikipedia. With multiple different explanations, no evidence to support any particular one over the others. For example, a common repeated suggestion comes from Hookhead in Wexford, Ireland, and the nearby village of Crook in Warford, Ireland. Uh, another is it comes from customs regulating which a firewood local people could take from common land. Uh, they were allowed to take any branches they could reach with a bill hook or a shepherd's hook. Uh, it was referenced in the snows of Kilimanjaro, the legend Sleepy Hollow, uh, the prisoner. Uh, and it was the title of a movie by uh, by Silas Howard and Harry Dodge. And what was the other phrase I said? Ah, I keep forgetting things right now. Ah yes, Beyond the Pale. I, I'm very forgetful right now. That's another thing I need to work on. According to dictionary.com, the pale referred to, uh, referred to in the idiom is usually taken to mean the English pale, part of Ireland under English rule, therefore, as perceived by its rulers, within the bounds of civilization. And freedictionary.com repeats it practically word for word.
So, um, huh? Apparently, the bound the uh, according to Wiktionary, Wik Dictionary, uh, Wik Wiktionary. Uh, the boundary of Ashtown Forest, a royal hunting forest, was known as the Pale, consisting of a pa uh, paled fence and a ditch, in, with, and a ditch inside, though dare to jump in, but not back out. Hmm. Interesting. So, um, yeah, some interesting stuff there. So. Orders and torn parchment. Okay, you can hear me, you can hear the game. Well, could. I'm recording, and there's footage. Pavel, take that cotton boy and get him drunk tonight. I mean, slobbering, incoherent, blubbering about how much he loves you, and spewing all over his boots, drunk. He's just a little tired, so it shouldn't take much. Once he's seeing pink unicorns, tie him up and stuff him full of deadly nightshade and sulfur. Just like you would stuff a goose before a Savoyan. They say dragons love virgins, so perhaps one of those winged serpents above tramps the sons will pick up this cherry. And since you have seasoned it nicely beforehand, the reptile will gobble it up and keel over. Just be careful when you're putting out this reptile's supper. Bust enough men already. Full bird. <sighs> Draconids. Slizard. Some peasants once offered me a king's ransom to slay as Slizard. Hefty pouch teal, chock full of gold, but I turned him down. Coins no good coins no good if you're dead. And a Slizard, it's no fucking fork tail. Zator, one of the Crinfin rate reavers. Slizards are often mistaken for wyverns or forktails, yet make no mistake. Slizards are nasty, terrible, da terribly dangerous beasts. Confusing them for wyverns will end very badly for the confuser. While a wyvern can tear apart and devour an untrained man in seconds, only a slizer can bake him to a crisp with a waft of fiery breath. And I'm just going to look these up as well. Slizard. Apparently they're also called Draco Lizard. And apparently Gralt. Uh apparently said nothing's able to parry a blow uh, from uh, Draco Lizard tail. I'm just having a look here. Um, there's a note here on the wiki about the Slizard. I was just wondering, was there any notes of references or something like that? Um, the Witcher 2 Assassin of Kings, which appeared before Sword of Destiny, was officially translated to English. The term is used, used as Slizard, which is described as a huge dragonite creature with deadly poisonous stings on the end of its tail that attacked Little of Gullet near Force of Angren. Um, the Crinfrin Reavers made sure that all members of its, this species were killed in Redania. Huh, cool. Uh, Mutual of Buclair's Wild Kingdom. We, uh, that's a quest I have. And we can actually find... Um, Uh, members of the Crinfrin Reavers. Uh, you 
may remember them from the start of Witcher 2, just during the prologue, and uh, a bit. Actually, I think that might have still been during the prologue. Uh, at, right at the start of the prologue, and then you see one of their members dead by the en end of the prologue. New boy. But uh, yeah, anyway, here in Bottom Wine we meet a uh, a group of them. So that's cool. Apparently, their leader of Boholt actually uh, lost his memory, which led them uh, originally there was just three of the guys. But when he lost his memory, they decided to bring in some new people. Their first apprentice was New Boy. Um, and the newer, the rest of them are people we meet here in Toussaint. Apparently, uh, early concept art for the first Witcher game actually wanted to have the uh, Boholt, the leader of the of the Reavers, in game, but they. Well, sorry, let me rephrase that. There was concept, according to the wiki here, there, there was concept art for a Boholt, the leader of the Ra Reavers. Um, so, you know, they were actually wanted to have him in Witcher 1, but they've decided against it. And they never seem to have revised that. Um, he doesn't appear here at all. In fact, the picture they have for him here on the wiki is actually from the TV show. Or from the movie, one or the other. It, they don't really clarify. They say the Hexer movie or TV series was the boat was portrayed by Marion Glinka. Again, I'm taking this off uh, Witcher.fandom.com. So yeah, but yeah, basically, they wanted to have him in Witcher One, then decided against it for one reason or another, and they never went back on that. Silver Basilisk. Grog always uh, liked looking at things that don't exist, be it a vampire with a human art, or the last basilisk of a species that no scholar has classified, discovering something taught not to be there, to be discovered. Uh, discovering something taught not to, be, not to be there to be discovered caused him great pleasure. That is why he took an interest in the contract, which at first glance seemed banal, but proved to be very intriguing. It concerned the very last basilisk of the nearly extinct species, Regalius Platinum. The tin scales covering silver basilisks are thinner than those of the more common brethren, making them thereby easier to burn. Thing these signs will prove very useful in a fight against one of their number. Yet one must be especially wary of monsters' venom, which is much stronger than that found in their widespread kin. Dragon of Fierce Doll. It's got scales, wings, claws, a dragon's a dragon. No point, Gavin. Just go kill it. Wagon, uh, village elder of Fierce Doll. If you truly know what a dragon looks like, uh, truly know what a dragon looks like. For those who have s seen one up close, really have the chance to share their impressions. That's why people are forever mistaking other monsters for dragons. This was the case in Fearsdale, where a so-called dragon wreaking havoc turned out to be a fork tail. Yet this mistaken attribution did not mean attrib uh, attribution did, us did not mean there was no reason for worry. The fork tail harassing Fearsdale was particularly a vile representative of its kind, when equipped with an, endlessly s an endless store of deadly venom. Fighting it without first drinking a regenerative potion or a poison antidote would be tantamount to suicide. In his fight against Forktail, Grog gave proof not only of his masterful swordsman skill, but also of a previously undemonstrated flair for shepherdry. With a little help from a sheep, uh, a brave sheep lent by the village elder, he lured the monster into a trap, then ended its, then ended its life. Saving and kept the sheep alive. So anyway, I sincerely hope you've enjoyed this, and I sincerely hope you join me again soon. If there's anything at all you'd like to tell me, anything at all, please let me know in the comment section below. If there is stuff you want to reference in the video, please just include a timestamp. That's, it goes for any of my videos. Like, it's not that I won't respond to you, it's just I won't have a clue what you're referring to. I might be able to take a gamble at it, but if you want a more precise thing, just leave a little timestamp there. Just at the start of me talking about the point. Um, like, if you want me to clarify something, or what have you. Say if I left the point unfinished. Just 
give me a timestamp. But anyway, I since because like it is currently uh, the eleventh of the eighth, twenty nineteen, at ten minutes, eleven minutes to four in the morning. By the time this comes out, it's gonna be sometime in 20, late twenty twenty, late twenty twenty. Um, so yeah, if you just leave me a note so I know what you're referring to, it'll be of great help. So anyway, uh, I sincerely hope you enjoyed Witcher Tree, uh, the Wa Witcher Tree Wild Hunt thus far. I sincerely hope you're as heartbroken as I at the end of Grolt's Tale. Like seriously, my heart aches. I'm not exact. Like I know plenty of YouTubers exaggerate, uh, put on a persona, what have you. I'm not. At worst, I may make myself chirpier than I always am, or suppress the fact I'm currently dying of stress due to that blog post. But I'm I'm being perfectly honest here. My heart aches at this ending because I've truly come to love these characters. I've truly come to truly enjoy this series. I've done so before, but the idea of it ending has really made me feel truly how much I care for them. You know, made me realize like. Shit, it's oh, it's almost over. I can't believe it. There's, there's, you know, there's so much more I wanted from, I wanted to see. You know, I don't, I don't want it to be over yet. I want to see more. You know, like ah. Oh. But anyway, I, I. I know, I know some YouTubers who exaggerate things, how they feel, like, you know, like, they get startled in the game, they start screaming like a mad thing, or what have you. I don't really do that. Um, like, you know, if I do it to any degree, I don't do it consciously. On some level, part of me wonders, do I do it, you know, on a subconscious level, that I do exaggerate things a bit, just for... I, you know, I, I emphasis or to force the words out. Sometimes I, you know, like I am, sometimes that's, you know, I have to, you know, force myself to speak and it's, you know, end up emphasizing things more than I intend, you know. It's an issue for you. But as far as I know, I don't do it consciously. I don't do it at all, but anyway, anyway, tangents aside. Uh, yeah, if there's anyone who'd like me to like, yeah, basically my heart is aching. I don't want to send. I want this to keep going. It is a beautiful, beautiful series, and I just don't fucking want it to end. But anyway, I sincerely hope you've enjoyed my, the session Witcher Tree. I hope you've enjoyed all the sessions of Witcher Tree. And I do hope you join me again soon. There'll be yet more coming. Plenty more to come, I'm sure of it. Um... And I hope you're there for uh, there with me for it. I I really do. I really hope so. After the Witcher Tree finishes, I feel like I need to bless myself after saying that. Um, it'll there will be coming Path of Exile Betrayal. I know a, a few years a bit late, but still you're getting to see it eventually. And then following that, my rituals playthrough of Grim Dawn. Following that, Shadow of Mordor. Oh, that maybe Dragon's Dogma could be something else. I have been working on a playthrough of Grim Dawn um, for the Warder, but it's a uh, once a week we play for a few hours kind of deal. I've been doing co-op. Um, the other thing is. What was it? Oh yeah, I think I was gonna say I might be take you know might want to start putting up uh, you know more Grim Dawn so soon. I might might want to you know even other series or two between, or maybe a long series between them. The uh, Shadow Mordor is not liable to be that long, you know. Um, so yeah. Regardless, uh, we'll leave th th then to worry about then. But anyway. I'm gonna cut this here. Sorry, sometimes I just get in the mood for Gavin and I just keep going. I'm t oh, I've always been terrible at signing off. Like I've said before, I don't have the gift of the gap. The gift of the gap has me. 
the Blarney Stone comes and kisses my ass to go give other people the gift of the gab. When they kiss it. But anyway. Uh, let's go talk for our own day. Till next time, folks. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed. As I was saying, if you, if you want me to expand on anything, rephrase anything, uh, finish a point, whatever, just include a timestamp. It's handy. Given how long it takes between between recordings, it's a bit of an awkward, you know. Um, given how long there is between uh, recordings, bluntly, I wouldn't know what you're referring to if you don't have a timestamp on it. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, like I said, it's gonna be like, over a year before this comes out. I'm in current the 11th of August right now, and this will be coming out uh, September, October, 20 in, in a year like in a year's time, and a few like 13, 14 months time. This will be coming out. I won't remember without you know you helped me along with the timestamp. Um. I feel like there's another point I wanted to say, and that's why I'm kind of repeating myself, because I'm hoping if I repeat myself, I'll fall into the right track, but that rarely happens. But yeah, let me know what, uh, tell me what you think. Let me know if you, with a timestamp and in the other cases, and I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope you join me again soon. And, till then, love and peace, baby. Finally, I found my way out of that hedge maze.